Fair on. Yeah. Okay. So we'll, we'll walk through the process in, in the way we run things if we get donations, as we get donations, yeah. which is always okay. a good way to start. Yep. Um, so we're, we're coming through the warehouse at the moment, but we'll, we'll come back to come back to that. So this is our, our good thing, good out area. Um, anything that comes in or leaves the building comes in through these, these green doors here. Um, when we receive donations, we tend to put them in different directions for triaging. So obviously not everything that people give us um, can be used or can be repaired or is useful for the projects we run. So we triage it out. Sewing so machines oh, go in this area. Good, good palette of sewing uh, so machines. Yeah, yeah. A couple, and this is this has been quite high lately. We've had two large pallets, but we're, yeah. we are working through. It. And Wednesdays is our, um, our one of our sewing machine sorting days, so we've got our sewing machine. Okay. So These are very useful because they're some not electric. They're not electric. Hand, some and most of them hand turned. Yeah, we, yeah. we do send okay. electric ones as well. Yeah. Um, but for the a, a large proportion, are the old manual sewing machines, okay. yeah. um, which can be quite easily converted to an electric operation as well with a small yeah. motor. Yeah. Um, what's up here? So once we've once we've um, received the tool donations, they come into this area which is a sorting area. Um, it's quite empty at the moment. Um, we, we cleared it down yesterday. We've got various streams. So again, all of our all of the tools we send are templated in toolkits. So we know exactly what tools we want to send mm. um, and we're looking for trade quality tools. Oh, so okay. our ethos is we're going to supply people with tools that are going to last them you know, 5, 10, 15 yeah. years. So you're making up a set of tools. So we're making so up a set of tools, yeah. toolkits, and I can show you some templates okay. uh, in a minute. Yeah. So we sort of through the tools that are donated. Anything that appears in the toolkit and is of decent quality, We'll, we'll put into the trolley and then we'll populate the warehouse with it, ready yeah. for refurbishment. Any other items, we don't keep anything just in case, okay? Because otherwise we would fill this place within about two or three months, okay? So everything else goes into different streams. So we've got we've got tool traders that will come and buy, I guess you'd say lesser quality tools or odds and ends. So so to give you an idea, this is this is some kind of a of a of a um, cylinder honing device okay probably for a lorry or a tractor something like that that's not something yeah. that we send to us okay that doesn't appear in a toolkit yeah. but probably someone somewhere will make use of it so yeah. that goes into tool traders box and we sell that pretty much as bulk by weight so some of these things like the electric drill is that for yeah. the battery the drills, drills, or is it no, just battery drills and they're not good quality the batteries yeah. are invariably dead so oh. again we, we won't yeah. send them to us we just send in landfill for that yeah so okay. this guy might make use of them to be honest, he, he buys it by bulk, and yeah. some of it's good, Sips some of it's bad. Yeah. It. Yeah. Um, we do we do uh, sales, so we'll do events and sales, country shows, garden shows, um, some of the bigger ones, New Forest, New Forest Show. Um, so, those are, so the mallets we will keep, and we send mallets in carpentry kits, so they've been sorted there. Um, some of the quite yeah so we, we we don't have any garden or agricultural projects that we run it's all okay. it's all trade oh, training so yeah. again things like good quality shears we yeah. refurbish these and they'll okay. be sold at, at outlets or, yeah. or at shows because they're quite sought after that helps with your transport costs it helps with transport costs training costs um living costs keeping the lights on in this place so there's yeah there's, there's lots of costs that those in any Amazing box full of spanners. Yeah, yeah. Again, imperial spanners or spanners of, of a lesser quality. We've got a chap who comes in and just buys spanners from us. He makes up like a classic car toolkit. So there's there's a route for everything. Um, and then when you get down to the very sort of lower end, we get lots and lots of brass valves, mm -hmm. fittings, okay. same yeah. with copper. So they go into they go into scrap. Yeah. And, and we will we'll generally raise. Five, six thousand pounds a year on our scrap sales. So again, yeah. it all goes back into the coppers to yeah. fund the projects, fund yeah. the operations. Yeah. So that's the sorting area. Um, we we reuse timber. Um, we reuse boxes. The only thing that we really can't reuse is broken plastic trays. So so we recycle almost everything. Unfortunately, broken plastic. So these are useful when you're making up packs of these tools. Be, these will be used for toolkits. Um, some of the older carpentry boxes again. 
there's a market for those. So, mm -hmm. so, we, we, so all we we use them as, as toolkits, just depending on, on where we are. And where do most of your tools go? Um, five African countries. All, all of them go to, to five African countries. So that's Uganda, Zambia, Malawi, Sierra Leone, or Ghana. So we work in five countries. And within each country, we have targeted partners we work with. So How do you identify tools. the individuals who need the tools? Well, we leave that to our partner organisations, and they would typically be organisations of maybe a church group or village elders, um, and they will identify people in the local community, local area, that, that might need, would need assistance, need support, um, or have expressed an interest in trade training. So they mm -hmm. might come to them and say, when you're next running the course, I'd like to be a carpenter or I'd like to... So you're not just supplying tools, you're also offering training? Training, yeah. And all of our, all of our um, participants um, get a year's training. Yeah, trade training, also life skills, literacy, numeracy, business studies. Um, and that's training in what? Carpentry? Well, you get training in any of the trades. It's with carpentry, car mechanics, tailoring, um, plumbing. That's not the whole range, but, you know, typically. So it's vocational, vocational okay. skills. Yeah. 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 And are these all hand tools, then, Stuart? Or um, or mainly sort of hand heavier, tools, heavier but we, stuff yeah, we will send we will send things like um, uh, power drills, um, yeah. chop saws, planers, sanders. Okay. Kind of portable more, stuff. Yeah, yeah. more yeah, it's portable yeah. in the main. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. more areas that we work in are are gaining electricity, sometimes yeah. on a sporadic yeah. basis. But so there is yeah. more power. There's more requirement for power tools. And they're increasingly using solar panels out in more yeah. rural areas. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Particularly solar panels, um, particularly for lighting and for things like sewing machines, low low draw. Yeah. You know, you'd have to have you'd have to have a some kind of battery storage facility and then an inverter to run yeah. a power tool. But the lower the lower current draw equipment, yeah, you can run it from solar. Yeah. So we've decided we're going to keep it. It's gone into the trolley, and then we bring it through to the uh, warehouse area. So if everything in the warehouse is a tool which we know will, will appear in one or more toolkits. Okay. First of all, we put them in the grey side, so they're stored awaiting refurbishment. Mm -hmm. Then the guys all the ladies who are going to refurbish the tools will come and pick them from the grey side, refurbish them, and then eventually they get populated back into the yellow side. And then we, when we pack it, we only pack them in the yellow so side. the yellow side is the stuff that's good to go. The yellow side is the yeah. stuff that's okay. ready to go, yeah. yeah. But as I said to you before, everything that's in any of these racks is a tool which, which appears in one or other of the toolkits. And lots of them appear in multiple toolkits. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I often give people an example. So let's find a nice... These are, this is a footprint wrench, okay, mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a simple wrench, yeah. holding pipe work, you know, working on larger nuts and bolts. Yeah. We could use it like that, it's a bit rusty, actually we probably wouldn't keep it, it's got broken in, but, but in general you could use it in its unrefurbished state. But when we've, when we've finished with it, and we've refurbished it to a, to a condition that we're happy with, it will oh, look more like okay. that. Yeah. Okay. Wow. So, and that's probably about ten minutes work there. Wire wheel to get the rust off, clean up the jaws if they're if they're a bit damaged, and then give it a coating of oil to, yeah. to stop it corroding. And that will last for decades. Decades. Yeah, absolutely decades. The thing is, as I said, we could use that, and that would push you would. But if you give someone that tool, it means that you're you're taking them seriously. They'll There's value it. Tiny. They'll value it. Yeah. When you go to your 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 first customer or you're in the first client. You look as if you're a professional, you're professional. as well, yeah. and also yeah. you're you're going to get a, a, a toolkit with maybe 50, 50, 60 tools in it. If they're all rusty, it starts looking like a box of scrap. Whereas if they're all in good condition, it looks like what it should be. Yeah. You know, a, yeah. tool, a toolkit for a yeah. tradesperson. So yeah. that's our ethos. That, that's how we work. That one's actually not going to go back in there because we can't. Okay. It's a broken yeah. jaw. We've, we're not sure. Um, so. It's kind of like a dream seeing all these tools in yeah, it's just amazing. Yeah, it's a bit yeah. of an Aladdin's cave, isn't it? <laughs> so that, that's our warehousing system. Um, it's a constant battle to keep it tidy. Um, look around there. Yeah. 
yep. hand drills, fresh drills coming out of our ears really. And I often say to people, my problem isn't really have I got enough tools, have we got enough tools? It's where am I going to put all these tools which keep coming in? You know, good, because good. We, we, we have yeah. excess of most of most tools. Mm. A few shortage ones, but we, we, yeah. mm. we've probably got about two to three years worth of stock here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. yeah. that's really, yeah. really good news, really. That's yeah, good. yeah, it is. Yeah. And, and we continue to be supported by public and yeah. rotary groups. Yeah, so you're still yeah. seeing a lot of support for, is it? Yeah. My father was a carpenter, so yeah, I, were, I, yeah. these look very familiar. familiar. Yeah. I used to play with them as a kid. The main, the main um, refurbishing workshop, um, which is where the bulk of the work goes on with, with the volunteers. Um, this is our sort of task blackboard. So I'll keep this updated with tools either that we might need for projects which are coming up. So we'll be sending lots of carpentry kits, we've got lots of saws up here, vices, hammers, chisels. Or it's areas on the grey side which are getting so full up with stock that we need to move some through to the refurbished yeah. side. Okay. So, so this is like the priority list. This is a priority, the priority, the priority board, the yeah. task board, yeah. yeah. If volunteers come in and they're, they're not sure what, what I need them to do. They look at this as a first instance and normally just get on with one or other of yeah. those items. Yeah. Some of them have, have, have more um, specific skills, so we've got a couple of guys who are really good at preparing planes, right. so they would just okay. do planes every week. Wow. Um, but most okay. other guys would just look at this <laughs> and, and just do, do you know, yep. take, take their jobs yep. from there. Okay. Once they've refurbished the tool, they go on to this area here, onto the trolley. Um, we call this the oil and bench. For obvious reasons, it's, it's where we where we store and oil up the refurbished tools. So they get a coat of boiled linseed oil on the wooden elements okay. and a coat of clean engine oil on the on the steel elements, just to keep corrosion away and keep the, hand, the wood in good condition. Even if you've been a, a volunteer here for for forty years or only four weeks, everyone puts their puts the tools here. They get a secondary quality check, so we've got templates and, and oh, okay. model, you know, yeah. model tools. What we're trying to achieve. What, what yeah. we're trying to achieve. Yeah. Careful with the oil there. We've got um, we've got a few test jigs and, and, and um, go no go gauges, no level, no levels. So it gets a secondary. They all get a secondary quality check before they're put back into the, the yellow side. And we do pick up um, the odd problem or the odd issue, and we we try to feed that back. Yeah, in, a, in a sensitive way to the, the people. Are it's testament to the quality of the original hardware yeah. that they have so much life left yeah. in them. Yeah, well, I mean, you, you, you do well to, to, to wear out or break something like a record bench vice. Yeah. I mean, it can be done, you know, and we do get them in that <laughs> someone's managed to snap. But how, how old are these originally? I mean, you might be looking at something from the 50s there. Um, I think this, this so that's plane, 70 years old already? Yeah, yeah. this mm -hmm. plane, I think the, one of our plane guys is, is so knowledgeable. You can tell by the type of handle and the model. Mm -hmm. So that one's from about the 20s or the 30s. So that's that 100 years old? 100 years old already, yeah. yeah. And really, okay. the only thing that wears is the blade. Okay. Put a new blade and it refurbish it. Yep. Yeah. You go for another and that can years. be sharpened yeah, yeah. By, the, time. by the person receiving it. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And, and in the kit, with a company kit, you get a honing guide, you get two sharpening stones, oil stones, so and you're trained how to do it as well. So you're self sufficient. So I did, yeah, yeah. So that's our QA oiling area. This is our kind of engineering workshop, if you like. Um, so in here we've got drill bit sharpening station. Um, so we, we kit up so we we we, 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 refurbish, we refurbish them yeah, 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 on the sharpening oh, machine. No, I've got a box yeah. of those, um, it's, yeah. it's quite a skilled process yeah. Um, yeah. and even though there's a machine it still takes a degree of skill but each country kit goes out with a set of material drills each each car mechanic or engineering type kit goes up a set of metric drills with tapping sizes as well so we, we tend to save the metric drills for the more um, uh, critical kits if you like and then the car kits get, get the imperial uh, ones to, to make it possible. Um, 
We've got a grip blaster and we've got bench grinders, lathe, pillar drills, um, a couple of floor brick machines which are for sharpening plain irons and, and chisels. So it's a, it's a well well, yeah. um, yeah, well appointed good. engineering shop really. And it's all you know, processes to help to do a program. Yeah. Yeah. They're probably 1930s, 1940s, again. And we talk about portable machines. We do on the odd occasion get larger items of, of normally wood processing equipment. Um, okay. These ones are, are partially refurbished. Um, electrically, they're done. We're just going to finish them mechanically. These will be crated up, and these will go to um, set up a a larger training workshop um, okay. so it, it's less requirement for larger machinery but we do we do send them. so that would go to a vocational training a vocational center, training center yeah, yeah. yeah and i think quite often what they will do is they will then you can come and rent time on the machine so the, yes. the, the training centers can be partially self-funding yes so if you're a carpenter and you want to process a load of wood on on a, on a large you know cross cut like this then you can you can come in and rent the space for an hour are. or two. Yeah. We in this country. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 So these are examples of, uh, of cases of tools that indicates what's in them? No, these are all sewing machines. So these are all refurbished manual sewing machines. So any, any machine with a white label, those are manual machines. Any machine with a blue label, those are electric machines. So these have all been refurbished and are waiting. Shipping. Ready to go. Ready to go, yeah. The, so the electric machines go straight from the shelf. The manual machines have a second quality check, and then they end up over here with checked, clearly marked on them. So we do a secondary QA check on those because we send so many and we, we refurbish so many. Um, but it's quite an easy check. It's just a sort of function check. And does it work? It does work. Yeah, it does it work? Yeah. Well, I yeah. guess you don't fall into the specialization. Yeah. But this is a carpenter's heaven, <laughs> mechanic's heaven. So you've got our woodworking area, and we sorry, right. we uh, we we use re reclaimed um, scrap timber, and we make up all the packing crates. So we will we will typically. Make up boxes in flat pack form, and then when we when we start to pack the kits, we know what we're going to send. We'll make them up into into the boxes. So they're right size for the tools inside. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we're we're a bit of a sort of rustic IKEA, really. You know, but uh, we 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 can't make them in boxes straight away because otherwise we just fill the whole workshop. Exactly. So you make them as you need them. You make them as you need them. Yeah. Yeah. Make them to order almost. Yeah. So you have a need for wood as well? Wood is more available at the moment for us than tools. Yeah. Yeah. And people who yeah. like doing woodwork. Yeah. 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 I mean we, we you know we, we only we can't buy timber, it's too expensive. So we get donated all sorts of all sorts of scrap timber. So and how do you advertise for the needs that you have? Um, things like Facebook, um, regular updates to our supporters. We've got groups around the country, so we've got 33 yeah. regional groups. So they put the word out as well. And, and more wood has been coming in as we've asked for it. Right. Because actually, it, as I say, it, it's, it's, it's one of the things that we run out of far, far more often we run out of tools. Yeah. Is, is yeah. So you're getting a lot of stuff off builders and... Builders, yeah. skips. I mean, this, yeah. this, this, all this supply came from a, uh, a local dump, a, a oh, big, okay. big commercial tip. Yeah. And they had two pallets that had been left out in the rain at a building yeah. yard somewhere. Yeah, no good for building anymore, but fine for us. Yeah, we yeah. just dry it out and yeah. then use it. So these are some examples of the examples cases of you're building. Of the cases you're building. Yeah. Yeah. These these ones are flat pack treadle cases. So we, I'll show you some treadles in a minute. We flat pack down in the in a minute. We can get around 15 treadles on a pallet like that. Uh, these ones are cases for um, builders' kits. So there's a shovel okay. in there. Yeah. Um, so it's built. They're built around the tools. Yeah, we know. So no waste of space. Yeah, no waste of space. No. 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 We, and we've got certain certain box sizes for certain kids. Yeah. So we we type, type one to nine. We know. We know which one. 
yeah. as we do. You don't sell boxes. Some of them go in toolboxes, as I say, so we've, we've probably got enough toolboxes at the moment, but yeah, when we get donations open. Yeah. So this is our um, sewing machine refurbishment room. Wednesdays is a quiet day for the term of refurbers. Um, and I was talking to you about trills. So these are the old cast iron trill yeah. bases, which allow you to, to run a manual machine from a drive belt yeah. and then have two hands free to, to use it. Yeah. Yeah. They look Victorian. Uh, they are, yeah, there may be some Victorian ones there, mm. but most of them would be 1920s, 1930s, So 100 years old. Easily yeah. 100 years old, yeah. 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 Um, very rare now. We don't get as many of these as mm -hmm. we can ask for. Yeah. Um, a lot of them are made into okay. coffee tables. Oh, these are still very popular. Very popular. popular. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, no, we, we get asked these all the time. Yeah. Yeah. They can be bought in country. There's a Chinese copy of, okay. of, of them, yeah. um, which works, you know, yeah. it's fine. Okay. And if we, let's say we were asked for 20, if we only could send 10, then we, we, we send funding for the other 10 to be bought okay. in the local market. Yeah. Um, but we, we, we fat pack those down, they go into a box like that, and then the lid, the lid of the box forms the tabletop for the sewing machine to sit. And nothing's there. wasted. Nothing's yeah. wasted, no. Yeah. no we, we, anyway, timber's valuable, we, we try to, to use it as, as carefully as possible. And inside that box are some legs. Let's see if I can show you that. Oh, it's been fixed down now, so uh, unfortunately not. But there are there are the legs which will allow you to 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 make a make a, a trailer if you like. And okay. then there's the, the actual flywheel and the pedal mechanism oh, right. still. Yeah. Okay. So uh, yeah, that's uh, yeah. that's our flat pack system for the trailer. And all the spares we we, we cannibalise old machines or you know quite a lot of the spares you can still buy uh, for single machines. Bobbins and springs and, and uh, bobbin wine and roots. Oh, you're right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, the other thing I talked about age, we've got um, every single single sewing machine that was made, and they, were, they made about 35 million yeah. in Scotland, yeah. has got its own serial number, mm -hmm. and you can date each one to the year of manufacture by its serial number. Yeah. And we get often get them in from um, you know 18, 1880s, yeah, 1890s. Yeah. 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 So that's quite a nice thing to go to to see how old it is. And what can we build with them? Or made with them? Yeah, exactly. Well, Singer had this great concept of mass production, didn't they? That's they were sort of the before, first, yeah. before Ford. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They were the original mass production. Interchangeable yeah. uh, parts. Yeah. 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 Interchangeable parts. Yeah. yeah. They 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 pretty much developed plywood to, to be able to, to be able to get enough wood. To build all the boxes for yeah. the machines, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, that was there. Was that was one there. I don't think it was their invention, but I think they they took it they took it commercially forward. Yeah. yeah. Um, so this is also our packing area. So we sort over there and we pack here. So if you have a look in, into this trolley, what we've got there is the the um, components of a solo building kit. So this would allow someone the, the basic tools to set themselves up as a as a builder. It's for one person, um, so you've got a couple of saws, um, pickaxe, lump hammer, your various yeah, tools. Okay. Actually, what we're yeah. looking at there is the yeah. component for two solo kits, actually, has a little, uh -huh. there's a bit of duplication, two pickaxes. Yeah. Um, cement mixer? No cement mixer, no, no. no. A few trowels, that's, yeah. that's by hand, yeah, yeah. 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 Knock, knock it up by hand. Um, and then we finally pack them into the kind of boxes that we were looking at. They go into pallets, um, and then we typically will pack 20 foot containers to ship them oh, to the five countries we work yeah. in. Yeah. Um, this one is a is a part shipment for Uganda, so we are about two thirds of the way through this. So, so all of these all of these pallets that you see wrapped up, uh, ready to go. They're so all, the container arrives here, presumably. The container arrives out there. We get about five days to load it. Yeah, yeah, and then, yeah. And then, and then, it's, then it's collected. Um, and she's gone. Yeah. Yeah. Either yeah. East Africa or West Africa, route, yeah. depending on the country yeah. we're going to. Yeah. Stuart, that was amazing. Yeah. That's our operation. And that's so, if, if folk watching this video want to know more about how they can get involved, yep. Tools for Self Reliance, how do they do that? Best thing to do is to phone us up um, on 02380 
8696 ask to speak to Stuart, who's me, or even better really is to drop me an email. So that's Stuart, S-T-U-A-R-T, at tfsr.org. And you have a website? The same, yeah, www.tfsr.org.uk. And you're on social media? Yep, search us on Facebook. Um, I think we've also got a Twitter and Instagram account, but I don't really go on there. So, but yeah, Facebook for sure. Yeah. Stuart, thank you so much for showing us around. Thank you. Thank you. Is that okay?